Good day. Today I will be sharing with you the country's economic performance for the first half of 2011. The winter tourist season saw a turnaround in arrivals after two years of decline. However, tourists have spent less while vacationing on the island. As a result, there has been no build-up in foreign exchange reserves in the first half of the year. Nonetheless, reserves remain more than adequate, at the equivalent of 20 weeks of imports. Business profitability has not recovered, and corporation tax receipts fell short of expectations. This has made it difficult for government to meet fiscal targets in spite of the increase in the VAT rate and restraint on discretional spending. The real growth of GDP in the first half of the year is estimated at 2.1%, with growth in tourism 5% leading the way. The growth in non-tradables is somewhat slower with increases in wholesale and retail, 2%, and the construction sector, 3%. The UK market continues to be a bright spot in the tourism recovery, with arrivals to May posting a 14% increase over the same period one year ago. A number of additional flights out of continental Europe have also boosted arrivals from the European market, especially from Germany. The second largest source market, the United States, has also experienced some growth as a result of a substantial boost in airlift capacity. These improvements have been somewhat tempered by the continued fall-off in arrivals from the Canadian market, where Barbados continues to be affected by competition from Central America. Regional arrivals grew by about 2% to May due to several sporting events, including the West Indies Cricket Board's One Day International Series and the Carifta Swimming Championships. Cruise arrivals contributed about 16% to total tourist days between January and May 2011, with the number of cruise arrivals increasing by about 4% when compared to a similar period last year. This year's sugar harvest was adversely affected by excess rainfall over the harvesting period. As a result, earnings from sugar are expected to be slightly below the amount received in 2010. Total manufacturing output fell by approximately 6% in the first quarter of 2011. It is estimated that tourism receipts contributed approximately 50% of foreign exchange earnings for January to June, compared to 52% in a similar period last year. The share of domestic exports is estimated to be around 14% of foreign earnings, compared to the 11% recorded in 2010. High international oil and commodity prices contributed to a widening of the current account deficit. Up to April 2011, imports of clothing more than doubled, while imports of food and beverages and other manufacturers grew by 13% and 32% respectively. Fuel imports grew by 37%, while those of machinery increased by 25%. Net capital inflows for the first half of 2011 were estimated at $319 million, of which major inflows included the sale of BL&P shares to Amira Incorporated, $188 million, financing to tourism and private projects, $70 million, and real estate flows, $44 million. There was an estimated 4% increase in the number of international business companies operating in Barbados between January and May this year when compared to 2010. This increase brings the number of IBCs operating in the island to 3,126 companies. Provisional estimates indicate that during the first quarter of 2011, the level of unemployment declined from 10.5% at the end of December 2010 to 10%, reflecting a 0.6 percentage points decline from the same period last year. 
The 12-month moving average rate of inflation edged up slightly to 6.4%. The main contributors were food, a price increase of 5%, transport, 9%, housing, 7%, and household operations and supplies, 2%. For the fiscal year 2010-11, the deficit was estimated at 8.7% of GDP, compared to 8.9% in the previous fiscal year. In the first two months of fiscal 2011-12, the deficit was 4.1%, down from 5.9% in April and May 2010. Transfers and subsidies and interest payments declined by 13% and 10% respectively. There was a 56% reduction in grants to individuals, but grants to public institutions rose 8%. Spending on capital projects and wages and salaries were also lower when compared to a similar period last year. Overall, spending was down 7% from April to May 2010. Corporate tax receipts were less than half of the collections received in April to May 2010. VAT receipts fell by 2% in spite of the increase in the VAT rate in the budget of November 2010. On the other hand, personal tax receipts were up by 10%, partly reflective of the removal of the tax-free allowance on travel and entertainment in the budget. Excise taxes rose by 13%. Two-thirds of the fiscal 2010-11 deficit was financed domestically, with private non-bank institutions and the NIS providing most of the required funds. External financing came mainly in the form of capital market borrowings and two policy-based multilateral loans. For the first two months of fiscal 2011-12, external inflows have been negligible, and government has therefore relied almost exclusively on domestic entities, commercial banks in particular, to fulfill its financing requirement. As at June 2010, net public sector debt was equivalent to 54% of GDP. If we include debt owed to government-owned agencies such as the NIS and do not take into account government-owned financial assets, the gross ratio is 103%. The Outlook for 2011 The economy remains on course to achieve modest growth in the region of 2% for 2011 provided there is no slowdown in the tourism sector. The construction sector could also see further measured expansion, with some contribution from foreign inflows, mainly to finance tourism-related projects. As a result of growth in these two sectors, which make a major contribution to employment, the rate of unemployment is expected to continue to ease. There are no inflationary pressures from domestic demand, but inflation expectations are very uncertain because of the unpredictability of import prices, especially for petroleum. The apparent extent of discounting in the tourism sector meant that there was no surplus of foreign exchange earnings during the first half of the year. Government will need to reduce its expenditure in order to dampen total spending in the country and hence imports in order to maintain foreign exchange reserves near the levels at the beginning of the year equivalent to 20 weeks of imports. A reduction of government expenditure would also bring the fiscal deficit back on course to achieve the targets of the government's medium-term fiscal strategy. I thank you.